Hello friends, today I will teach you one important inflammatory lesion that is the rhinosporidiosis. Now before I start my video, I request you to see the video in the highest quality. You can change the setting in the YouTube setting and see the video in the highest quality so that the quality of the image will not get hampered. So what is rhinosporidiosis? It's a granulomatous inflammation. It's an inflammatory lesion, but it's specifically the granulomatous inflammation. Now, which are the common sites of involvement of such rhinosporidiosis? So, remember that common site is nose, then your nasopharynx, then your conjunctiva, and it can involve the larynx or skin as well. It can involve the larynx as well. Now the common site is always the nose. In the 90% case, the, the site of involvement is nose. Now what's the etiology? Why it happened? So the etiology is the rhinosporidium siberi, right? The organism is rhinosporidium siberi. Initially, it was thought that it is one of the fungus, right? But nowadays, it has been realized that it is not the fungus. But actually, it's a protozoa and specifically, it's an aquatic protozoa means it resides in the water and the soil. Usually, this parasite is present in the water and the soil. Now, how this rhinosporidium siberi will get transmitted? So, the transmitted is obviously by taking the bath or working in a stagnant water that is contaminated with rhinosporidium siberi right so in that way it can transmit but remember that it will never be get transmitted person to person the person to person transmission is not present now once you got infection in the nose usually the usually you acquire the infection if your nasal mucosa is get damaged right if your nasal mucosa is damaged then you have more prone for development of this rhinosporidium severe infection now how it look clinically so you have to remember that clinically it's a obstructive nose lesion there will be large polypoidal mass in the nose right there will be large polypoidal mass and within this mass there can be presence of white dots there can be presence of white dots so we can say that there will be presence of granular polyp in the nose right granular polyp in the nose and from the outside on the exterior view it's look like an strawberry so we can say that there will be strawberry like a granular polyp will be present now which can be the symptom if you have such a polypoidal bleeding mass so obviously you can have the nose bleeding right the one complaint can be nose bleeding and because the mass is obstructive there can be nasal obstruction and you might feel difficult in breathing. There can be presence of mucus as well because of inflammation. So this is the in general idea regarding the etiology and how it gets transmitted. Now how will you confirm the diagnosis? Obviously, the confirmation is by doing the histopathology from the biopsy. You have to do the histopathology examination. Clear? So this was the case we have received. Uh, we have received the 2 by 1 centimeter biopsy from the 40 year male patient. Usually it is not gender predict predilected disease, right? It can develop equally in the male or female. So we have received the biopsy and we have processed it and examined microscopically. We have surprised the diagnosis was rhinosporidiosis. So how it get diagnosed? So for the diagnosis, you have to remember the three points. Remember, my friends, you have to remember the three points. First, there will be presence of large cyst. Second, there will be presence of endospore. And third point is obviously the presence of inflammation, right? So why this cyst is happening in this microscopic section? So this cyst is nothing. It is the sporangium. It represents the sporangium, right? So how this sporangium looks like? I will show you in this figure. 
Sorry. I will see you in this figure. Just see. These are the large cyst. Can you able to appreciate? These all are the large cyst. Clear? So this all cyst is representing the sporangium. It is the structure seen in this infection. Sporangium. That will be seen as a cyst. And now this cyst, this sporangium means this cyst will contain the endospores within it. There are many endospores, sometimes up to 200 to 300 spores. So this is the sporangium, right? This is the cyst. This is the sporangium. And it will contain the endospore within it. These tiny dots are the endospores. So these are the first two points of diagnosis. And another point is, third point of diagnosis is, the cyst is surrounded by a heavy inflammation. Particularly lymphocytes and macrophage are present. Clear? Sometimes you can able to see the giant cells as well. In our section, the giant cells were very scanty. But it can be present sometime in a large numbers. Again, this is the figure. This is the sporangium, large cyst. And it will contain endospore within it. In that way, you can diagnose the case of rhinosporidiosis microscopically. It's very easy to diagnose. The diagnosis is very straightforward. Again, I am summarizing. There will be presence of large globular cyst. So that cyst is represent the sporangium. It is nothing. It is the sporangium, right? The sporangium will contain endospore within it. There is a presence of endospores. And the cyst is getting surrounded by a heavy inflammation. Sometimes there can be presence of giant cells. So these are the three diagnostic points for the diagnosis of rhinosporidiosis. Now which are the differential diagnosis of this inflammation? So the main differential diagnosis is the cochidio, cochidioid emitis fungal infection. But in this fungal infection, uh, obviously, the presence of endospore will be there, but uh, you can able to see the hyphae as well if it is a fungus infection and the culture will show the growth of fungus. What is the treatment of this rhinosporidiosis? Can you imagine? The treatment is only surgical excision. The medical treatment is not much effective. Initially, the surgeons were trying amphotericin B like antifungal drugs and for tericin B like drugs clear but uh, it is not much effective ultimately you have to do the surgical excision so that is regarding the treatment so in this way you can diagnose the case of rhinosporidiosis hope my video will be beneficial to you in making such important diagnosis whenever you encounter such case if you like my video subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever I am posting the new interesting videos. Thank you very much.